All right, we're now going to go through the lung model. I'm going to leave out anything that had to do with the larynx model, so if you want to see any of the larynx features, you should refer back to the larynx video, which you'll find on the same site. Now here we have the lungs, so we can see the left lung and the right lung. The lungs are the apexes at the top, so the pointy tops are the apexes, and the broad, broad flat bottoms represent the base. Each lung is divided into lobes. Our left lung is divided into only two lobes, the superior lobe that we see up here, and the inferior lobe, which is sort of posterior and below the superior lobe. The superior lobe and inferior lobe of the left lung are separated by the oblique fissure, this line that we see here. The right lung is divided into three lobes. We have the superior lobe up here, the middle lobe in this region right here, and then the inferior lobe sort of at the back into the bottom again. The superior and middle lobes of the right lung are separated by the horizontal fissure, and the inferior and middle lobes are separated by an oblique fissure. Now if we go back and look at the left lung, you'll note there's a large space in here which would be receiving the heart. This space on here is called our cardiac notch, a divot to receive the heart in the left lung. Now I'm going to remove the surface of the lungs so we can look inside the model a little bit more. With those parts removed, the trachea becomes very, very prominent, and you can see the tracheal cartilages, the bands of cartilage <coughs> wrapping around. The trachea eventually divides itself in two, and this splitting spot is called the carina. Where it splits, it now becomes the bronchi. So we can see the primary bronchi going to the left lung and the right lung right here. Once we get within the lung proper, every time there's a splitting point, we move to our next order of bronchi. So we have primary bronchi here. You'll then see there's a split right there to form secondary bronchi. And then the secondary bronchi splits to form a tertiary bronchi. And it goes so on and so forth through the lungs. You cannot see the bronchioles or the alveoli because they're too small to be represented on this lung. If we shift gears over to the left lung, we can now see some of the blood vessels drawn in. So we have the pulmonary arteries and veins. Remember that the coloring is somewhat backwards, if you will, to our normal coloring system. The pulmonary veins are showing up in red because they're returning the oxygenated lung to the left side of the heart, whereas the pulmonary arteries are blue because they're bringing deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart. If we go to the bottom of the lung, we can now see the diaphragm muscle, this dome of muscle that wraps around the bottom of the lung. And the last feature to show on the lung model is actually seen on the torso model itself. And on the torso model, this blue lining that we see is the parietal pleurae on your list, a wrapping of the lung. 